as the world begins to rapidly change with AI technologies beginning to emerge, as well as getting more and more global, there is a big concern about cybersecurity at both the individual level as well as national levels. And I am here today with an expert in cybersecurity, Balaj Nudd, and we have been working together for three years now. He came across me online on YouTube. My name is Amanda Horvath, and I teach people how to create videos online and get their message out there. And after working together for three years, I am hopping in front of the camera to interview him on his expertise of what everyday individuals should know about cybersecurity. So Balaj, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself in terms of the, your world of cybersecurity? <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Amanda. So cybersecurity 25 years ago was something that uh, people thought of only for big organizations and, and not even nation states at the time. It was really organizations protecting their data, their information that contained value, bank accounts, social security numbers, things like that. And then as our lives go online, we realize that everybody needs to worry about cybersecurity. So this journey over the last 25 years, uh, I'm very happy to share that with you, Amanda, and with you guys, the listeners. Yes. And Balaj runs an organization called New Push. So why don't you tell us a little bit about New Push, and then we'll dive into it. We started New Push right before year Y2K, as we were calling it at the time, year 2000. And then it evolved as our lives evolved. As we went more and more online, cybersecurity became a bigger part of getting an online presence. So from starting an online presence now all the way to protect your data, protect your privacy, this is our journey that we did. And I guess we're going to put a little bit of a window on that journey of why is it useful to you? So I think the first thing in, in full transparency, I know very little about cybersecurity. The only things that I know about it is because Balaj has taught me the things that I know about it. And I've been a very slow student. And as he talks about it, I'm also realizing, ooh, there's a lot of things that I should have in place. And so I wanna dive into those things. And I think one of them is can be or i'll just kind of mention some of the concerns that i have and then from there you can kind of begin to guide the conversation to a degree on like what's the first thing that we should be considering so i think there's some fears about like obviously passwords that's one that everyone knows to a degree if someone can get your passwords they can access so much of our lives another one might be personal data in terms of photos or even your online identity in terms of Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or anything like that, if someone was, I've heard a lot about people like hacking this person's YouTube channel and they lose complete access to their channel and, and different things like that. Other main concerns, I'm sure that there's so much more that I'm thinking of or that there that are, that I'm not thinking of, I suppose. But what would you say is kind of the first thing that someone needs to get into place that is has that mindset of this is probably something I should do, but I don't want to be so inconvenienced by it, but I need to take some action. What should we be considering? I think this last point you're making is maybe the key where I would start, that security and convenience are always opposed to each other. As you realize that you have something to lose uh, by people getting onto your computer, stealing your information, doing stuff, then you need to have a willingness to give up some of the conveniences for security. Just like your house, you spend the time to get a better lock on your outside door, and then you spend the time to actually lock it. Even though it takes longer to lock your outside door, typically, you do lock it. And uh, maybe you even install a camera. A lot of people have you know, the ring installed on their house, and they watch who comes, and Sometimes they watch in dismay as somebody steals a package in front of their house and they can do nothing else but watch the, the footage and ring. But we are all on a journey of be willing to give up a little bit of convenience uh, for our security. So I think we, we're going to share here in this conversation with you a few tips that, that you can do, uh, which will be giving up a little bit of convenience, but maybe it will allow you to feel like, hey, I'm going to take less risk. I'm going to, I'm willing to do a little bit of extra effort so that I have le less risk 
uh, with what I'm doing online, with my online presence. And maybe what I would talk first about is, is a myth. A lot of times I have friends who use very weak passwords, like password one, two, three. Okay. And I'm like, well, wow, this is, you shouldn't do that. And the first reaction is very defensive, you know, because they feel like, Hey, this cybersecurity expert is berating them. And so people get defensive, our brain kind of shut down and we're like trying to justify where we have in the first justification we tell ourselves is I have nothing to hide. Okay. And so my kind of crazy answer to that is, so when you go to the bathroom, it's okay if your neighbors can watch and, or if it's on YouTube, like you don't care. And they're like, oh, no, 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 of course not. While we might feel we don't have anything to hide in terms of we're not doing anything nefarious. And that's what people mean that I have nothing to hide. I'm an honest citizen. I don't cheat. I don't steal. I don't lie. All that stuff. And I have nothing to hide. Yes, that's true, but you have your privacy and your privacy is actually a human right, but it's real. You do care how people see you. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's a good point. That is an interesting thing that I've never even thought of. Like, oh, I have nothing to hide. That makes sense that you would, you know, especially certain passwords. There are certain websites where I'm like, I have, we all have these standard passwords that we use that we feel like are kind of personalized to our life that are easy to remember. And if you're using like LastPass or OnePass, right? OnePass, I think. One password. One password. Or these other websites, you can use that encrypted one where I'll create a generic password for me. And then it's a little bit more secure. Well, sometimes it's almost like, oh, this website doesn't even matter. So I should just use this one password the unprotected one for that, but I can see how, like, if someone gets that one, they could begin to crack the ones that don't matter. Like if someone gets into something that doesn't necessarily matter, what's the danger there? Yeah. So first of all, if you repeat using the password, the first thing that they will do is they will try everywhere that same password. And let's say it's your Facebook account. Okay. And let's say you're like, Hey, I have nothing really special posted on Facebook. There's nothing they can find, et cetera. But then if you think about it, the real value is not that they can now suddenly have access to your photos that only your friends can see. The real value is they cannot impersonate you. Okay. So they can reach out on Facebook to other people to make them believe it is you so that then they can obtain a certain action. And that's what we often underestimate. Uh, it's kind of a game of chess. Everybody can learn chess in a couple of hours, right? The rules, there isn't that many rules. There is 32 pieces, right? One step forward, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's 32 pieces. Each piece has a couple of rules, how you can move them. And, and really on your side, there's only 16 pieces. You can learn the rules in a couple of hours, but then that won't make you a chess master. And the way a grandmaster would play a chess game like you can't even imagine. So if you'd look at a chess board and say, oh, well, nobody can get to my king, okay? Like there are people who can play that game like chess masters and they will get to the king. And anyone who played chess, they know that a chess master will beat them in 30 seconds, right? I mean, unless you're another chess master, you can, you, you will be able to defend yourself. But if you're not an exceptional chess player, a, ma a grandmaster will beat you in 30 seconds. Okay. So that's, uh, the, the grandmaster will have beaten you before the game starts really, because he'll know, okay, what will a beginner do? And he has all the possible combinations where in maybe five moves, he's going to beat a beginner. Right. And the same thing applies to your privacy and security. Like you think of, oh, my Facebook password or this and that, but those guys already know all the tricks that they're going to employ in lateral movement, the different steps in combinations that you cannot even fathom. So mm. while you see the different moves as individual moves and, and, and you don't necessarily feel a danger with any one of them, think of a chess game that the five move with which a grandmaster will beat you, none of those moves are very special. It's just that he can think five moves ahead and you can't, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's what the attackers will do. So the reason you will put in place the basic protections is not to outsmart a grandmaster. You're not going to outsmart a grandmaster. What on the other hand you will do is the famous bear analogy. 
So I don't know if you heard that one, Amanda, but do you know how fast you need to run to outrun a bear? No idea. Faster than the guy next to you. <laughs> right. So, so basically in this game, you know, the attackers will, if they have an easier prey, they will give up on you and they will go for the easier prey. So basically if you, what we call in cybersecurity, good cybersecurity hygiene, that's going to give you a lot of protection. If someone has singled you out and they want to go after you, there's little you can do because one of the richest men in, men in the world, Jeff Bezos, he became the target of another very rich guy and his phone got hacked. So yes, in some ways you could say, oh, well, if Jeff Bezos gets hacked, like he has billions of dollars, like how can I protect myself? But that's not an everyday scenario because the guy who attacked Jeff Bezos, he had to spend over $10 million to be able to hack Jeff Bezos' phone, okay? So make your life be harder to get than two bucks, okay? That's basically what I'm saying. So going back to your original question with passwords, yes, easy passwords are not a good idea and repeating the password is not a good idea, but these are really advices from the past decade. In today's day and age, what you really wanna do is learn what a passkey means. So if you have, and I don't know where I misplaced my phone. Oh, here it is. So if you have, for example, an iPhone or an Android or whatever, then you have face recognition or you have fingerprint recognition, and that can become your passkey. Because now you can see how remotely somebody trying to attack and get into your account, if he needs to simulate your face or simulate your fingerprint, much, much harder than a pass, password that can be cracked very easily. So basically, you need to go through your accounts and go through these pains of saying, okay, I'm going to set up my face ID. I'm going to set up my fingerprint. Or maybe, and I'm kind of giving it a little bit away, away here, but here I always have with me this other little key. It's like a USB key that's generating a code every 60 seconds. And that's wow. another physical key that you can get. And this key... Like mine is called a YubiKey. There are other ones that are generating. Google actually standardized on YubiKey, so pretty good firm. Um, it's like $50 to get one key that can be the key for all of your different secure accounts, like your bank account and things like that. So let's say that you're someone, even you have these repeating passwords, you've now learned, okay, I shouldn't do this. What are the steps that you would take to begin to get secure. So it can feel very overwhelming to say, oh my gosh, I have all these things out there. So getting, and I, as we've talked about before, you highly suggest one password as the password go-to service. Now, if, for any of you that are unfamiliar with what that is, it's a password service that basically saves all of your passwords in one place. And you have one password that you use to log into that vaults where you can access all of them. And really they automatically save. And so once you set up your account, every time you log in, it will automatically be saved into that account. Would you just start there by, if you don't have one of those yet, starting there, every new password that you create, generate a new one that is more encrypted and any that you're noticing are the repeating passwords, change those as you go, or how would you go about this process? Okay, so we're in a little bit dangerous territory here, Amanda, because you're starting to bring out the geek out of me. Okay, so I hope I'm not going to lose anyone. But 1Password is an amazing recommendation just because it's a commercial product, so they made it easy to use. Those of you who are listening to that and who happen to be geeks, there are open source versions of that are free, so you don't have to use a commercial one. But for most of you, it's the ease of use. You get 1Password. You can get it at one time. Uh, which is just gonna work on your machine, or you can get a subscription base where it's gonna help you tie all of your systems together. So it's up to you um, how much you wanna spend on it. Either way, it's a moderate amount compared to the security it offers. And you're right, it will then make it viable for you to have a different password on every site and a different hard password, hard to get password, because you know the, the combinations around names, around places around dates you may think that's very smart but in this day and age computers are breaking those passwords in a matter of seconds okay so 
that's not useful anymore. You really have to have random passwords that are hard to guess to give yourself a, sh a chance of protection. All right. And We're so that's the first step. Ones that have words in them, you're saying, not the random generated passwords, or they're breaking those. Yeah, if if, if you have passwords with 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 words uh, and uh, numbers, they're very Got easy it. to crack. Uh, if That's if they have signs, they're harder to crack. But typically, what we use as humans, we would put one or two signs, or we would have this use of the signs, like we'd use an at sign instead of the a. All that, all the password crackers have those algorithms that we use in our brain. Okay, so anything that a human has come up with ever the algorithm already knows and it can apply that to guess the password, okay? Especially okay. now with AI, uh, it's the password cracking has become much, much more because as you can imagine, all those passwords vaults that uh, hackers have harvested, whether it's black hat hackers or white hat hackers, there is a lot of password vaults that have been harvested. They can just teach that to the AI and so the AI system can then basically try to guess passwords much, much faster because they have, they recognize the patterns that people use and they can hone in on patterns. So you dramatically reduce the brute force attack time in, in these cases. Brute force attack just means that you keep trying until you succeed in guessing somebody's password. So first step is really being able to, to create a different password for every one of your sites, which a tool like one password makes really easy. And and this is where I'm going to be a little geeky, so bear with me. But 1Password has a really cool feature. When you have a bunch of websites where you have passwords on, it will tell you which website has been breached, has been attacked successfully by attackers, and they leaked the passwords. So you can go back to the website and immediately change the password on your website, on that website, so that you protect your account faster than anyone else. That, that feature of 1Password, it's called Watchtower. So the Watchtower basically keeps looking at all the sites that you have placed your passwords at and where there is, has been a breach. They will basically let you know and change your password there. That makes sense. Yeah. What about when you're creating that 1Password that allows you to log into those? What are some best case, like best practices for that because i imagine that password is even more important than any other password yeah so that password you they typically don't call it a password they call it a passphrase just to show that it needs to be longer so the passphrase needs to be long that one you might want to make it memorable as long as it's really long because if, if it's memorable but really long it still take a long time to guess I would write it down. I would put it in a safe, okay? I would put it in a safe in an envelope uh, for two reasons. One is you may forget it, okay? And then you don't want to be locked out of your vault. And the second reason is you, you may just simply get into an accident or something happens where, or you want, you know, people who survive you to be able to get into those accounts to make their life easier if something happens to you. So that's those are the two reasons I would write them down. I would uh, put them in a vault and I would let somebody that I trust know that it's there. Okay, so I think that's a perfect introduction into the number one mistake that people have with cybersecurity. All right, if you like this video, be sure to click like, drop your comments below, letting us know what was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.